We all have situations, experiences, and moments in our life when we know deep at our core we have to do something different. We have to pivot. And regardless of how big or small that pivot is, it requires us to change something in our life. And that change can feel really uncomfortable. However, it is that change that is creating something entirely new. And it is that newness that creates a very different way of life in one area or multiple areas of our life. What's this all about? It is all about reinventing, reinventing thyself. My name is Michelle Shutter, and I'd like to welcome you to Reinventing Thyself. I am so glad that you joined me today because it is here that we'll move beyond our old self, our old identity, and that trailer of garbage from the past that we like to pull into the future, but really need to ditch that hitch. It is here that will move into that place of reinvention and embracing the newness of it all. Are you ready to step into reinventing thyself? Because guess what? It is never too late and your time is now. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to reinventing thyself. Whether you are catching this on podcast or watching this on YouTube, congratulations. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you for being here today because today's topic, a lost voice, may be something that deeply resonates with you. So super excited that you're here and I can't wait to hear what you are taking away from this episode because when I think of reinventing thyself, it's really about that pivot that has shown up for us. In some way, shape or form, we have this deep feeling, this calling that we need to do something different in our life, whether that is seeking something more that we are passionate about, something that brings us more fulfillment, something just to maybe even just change up life in some way. Well, when you think about reinventing thyself, it's really about embracing the newness of creating something new, but it has to be aligned with our heart and soul because if it's not, it throws us way off track. And really that alignment and embracing that newness is the core of reinventing thyself. And so today we're going to tap into this topic of a lost voice because let's face it, over time, our voice can be shut down at times. It can be stifled. It can be in a, we can be in a space where we just don't even want to use our voice. And when I think about reinventing thyself, you really have to bring your voice back to the forefront because if you don't stand up for yourself and what you want and what you want to move forward in accomplishing, nobody else is going to do it for you. And so your voice is such a major tool in your toolbox. So just a a quick intro here. My name is Michelle Shutter and I have, when I think about reinventing myself, I have done that so many times that I can't even tell you how many times that I have done that. And the the challenging part is that when we're reinventing our, our, I, thyself in some way, it's really about ripping that tape off. So if you saw the image that I put with this podcast or with this video, you'll see that I had a piece of masking tape over my mouth with the word lost over it because There are a variety of reasons, and I'm going to share some of those with you today uh, based on my experiences, but that perhaps you need to just pause and think about, my gosh, is my voice as strong as what it could be? And if it's not, where did I lose it? What is holding me back? What is getting in the way of me using this tool, this valuable tool, this gift? that has been implanted in me since birth, why, why is it now falling into that lost category? So we're gonna tap into that. Um, but I, one question I want you to think about is, you know, when, when that pivot shows up in, and I always encourage you to lean into it, right? Because it's showing up for a reason. But 
how does that make you feel when you feel like you've lost your voice? Now, for me, it, it's, a, it's such a part of me now that it doesn't feel good when I don't, when I don't really tap into my voice and use my voice. I feel like I am, when I don't use my voice, like I'm disconnecting myself from my true self. And that whole space of disconnection doesn't feel great to me. And I want you to know that <laughs> there are times in my life that I didn't have a strong voice, that I, like I stifled it, that I didn't have the confidence, that I had a, a lot of self-doubt and my self-esteem was like plummeted. Now, I'm going to use that whole analogy, like never judge a book by its cover here, because it doesn't matter if it's me or somebody else, like we just don't ever know somebody's story, right? So we can look all put together and confident and a, a roaring self-esteem and, you know, we put self-doubt to the back. Like that's how we can look on the outside, but on the inside, there is a high potential that we're still crumbling. Like we're still trying to navigate these. We're still trying to get our feet planted back under us. And that comes because like there's been a shakeup in our world in some way. And some things have happened over time that we've let build up. And so in the whole process of it, we, we lose our voice. And again, I so want to, to encourage you to rip that tape off and find that voice and let your voice be expressed, not in a way that's disrespectful, but in a way that is true to you. So I want to share with you kind of what like, this whole process of how I came up uh, about, you know, reinventing myself is it, it took me a long time. It took me a lot of do-overs. It took me a, like a whole pile, a whole stack of like writing things out and, uh, okay, I'm going to, you know, my impulsive part of me is like, yeah, I'm going to go for it. And, you know, um, blindness on fire type of thing. And, but yet there was always something lingering in the background that didn't resonate with me. And so when I would shift and pivot and move into something, sure, it felt like exciting and right in the short term, but the short term wasn't what I was looking for. I was looking for something long term, something that was long term, but yet could evolve, that I could grow into even more and expand, right? Like, we don't want to be locked in this little box. We want the opportunity to fully express ourselves and, and tap into that expansiveness. But here's what I found. When I was seeking the short term of things rather than the long term of things, like really I was out of alignment. And when I, you're out of alignment, yes, you can, you can get results. Yes, you can move forward. But again, it's in the short term. And so like my, my, my intuition, my inner knowing, like it, it knew that, it knew that. But I was afraid to stay in the space of the unknown for a long period of time until something was revealed to me. Because like my ego mind, my head centered self was like, like, I want to move forward. I, I want to get going here. And when I finally, like, it's probably taken me years to, you know, get this lesson to really be hit by a two by four in a sense. Like when I just sat in that space and I committed to, you know what, I don't care how long it's going to take this time. I'm just going to stay here so that I can really develop something and grow into something that, that is aligned with my heart and soul. Like my voice just developed at a new level. Like I didn't feel lost. Everything about what I've created recently feels aligned, feels true. It comes, I'm like, it flows. It, there isn't effort in this. There, there isn't a struggle in this. It flows. And so when I want, what I want you to think about is if your voice is lost, like where are you out of alignment? in terms of where you want to use your voice. And I really want you to think about too, is 
have you become disconnected from your true self in a sense? In that you're no longer tapping into your heart. Everything is flowing from your head. And it really, the, the truth of things for you always flows from your heart. It, it really never flows from your head. Your head will try to validate things. It will try to justify things. But if you want to be in true alignment, it has to flow from your heart. So really think about that piece. And yes, again, like it's okay to rush into something, right? It, it's okay to, to jump into something impulsively. But in the long term of things, you really want to look at the alignment of it. Because essentially, like, isn't that what it's about? Like, why would I only want to have my voice be as strong as it can be in the present moment on a short-term basis? My voice is going to serve me for a long time, or at least that's what I want. So why wouldn't I want to look at that from a place of long-term? The other, the next thing I want to think, I want you to think about too is like how you prioritize yourself. And let's face it, if you're a mom, if you have lots of responsibilities, it is super easy <laughs> for you to put yourself on the back burner to really not prioritize yourself in any way, shape or form. And, and the reason being is, you know, moms, a lot of moms, like we want things to be efficient, right? We want our household to flow. We, we don't want to miss things on the calendar. We want to make sure the kids are, are taken care of and they're, they get to their activities. And because let me tell you, when you, you miss an activity, even though you may have it on the calendar, but right down the wrong time, like that doesn't work out, right? Like that, that's bad news. Um, and even though motherhood, being a mom is nurturing, it's feminine. The whole piece of running the household and caring for the kids in a sense of making sure like the schedules, the calendars, the events, like all that, like that takes a ton of masculine energy. And if we are feminine energy dominant, which the majority of women are, that um, again, you have a balance, you have both masculine and feminine energy within you, regardless if you're a male or female. But when you're fe feminine or masculine, when you're in that masculine energy for an enormous amount of time, but yet you are feminine energy dominant and you don't tap into that feminine energy, that's a, that's a problem. And so that energy then essentially is blocks our voice because when we don't use the feminine energy as a way to support us, as a way to allow our creativity to flow and, and to nurture ourselves, we lose our voice. We lose our voice because we didn't prioritize ourselves. And then when we come from a place of wounded energy, it doesn't serve us. It doesn't serve us. And so again, we get into this place of disconnecting from our true self, all because we didn't hit the pause button and prioritize ourselves. Now, again, as I mentioned before, this is super easy to do because, again, like we prioritize our kids over us. And let me tell you, my kids are not little anymore, but there are still times where it is super challenging to put yourself first. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend not putting yourself first. But regardless of the age, it still can be challenging. So I get you. I hear you. But again, if you want to find that voice, you have to care for yourself and you have to prioritize yourself. Another thing that has happened to me over time is that, you know, when I became disconnected, kind of just over time, like it, it doesn't happen overnight, but it's the gradual process of it over time, is that I placed more trust in others rather than myself. And yet I have such a deep, strong inner knowing, a strong intuition. And yet I ignored that. And that doesn't serve my voice at all. 
So think about that in, in terms of where you're at. Are there other people that perhaps you trust more to have your voice than yourself? And this can all like really even weave into the whole piece of uh, accountability. Yes, there are people perhaps in, uh, in different positions throughout our life that, that we trust they will have um, our heart and, what, and the goodness of who we are at the forefront of their decisions. But that isn't always the case. And so our voice then has to be used in a place of accountability and trusting our inner, know inner knowing, not only accountability for ourselves, but also for them. And again, I'm not saying that we do this in a, a disrespectful way in any way, shape or form, but be true to yourself. Rip that tape off and find that voice. And so think about like, why don't I trust myself? Why do I put my trust in, in other people over myself? What's getting in the way? And so these first three things actually may even be setting you up for the, this fourth piece here. And so whether it's alignment or prioritizing ourselves or you know, where we're placing our trust, we can't really discount the past and, and the past situations, events, experiences, hurts, hardships, like all of that can certainly um, mold together and create blocks for us and really block our voice in some way. Now, those experiences could happen in, in adulthood, in teenage years, all the way back into childhood. And when we think about this, you know, there are times where we don't, as kids or teens, and, some, and even adults at times, like, we don't know how to process these emotions. This, and it, again, emotion is just an energy. It's an, an energy in motion, right? And so when we don't process those energies, what happens? Hmm. A lot of times they can land right in our throat. When they land in our throat, we block ourselves. And I was, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine this weekend, and for some reason we got on um, being introverted or extroverted, and she had said, you know, as a child, she was very introverted, like, to the point where it was, like, painfully shy, and I was, like, so surprised, because she's such an outgoing person right now, and, and like, conversations are so easy with her, and, and I asked her about that, and, and she said, well, it stems from my parents. And, and when I was growing up, it was this whole realm of kids are to be seen, not heard. And so think about that. Take some time to go back into your child, childhood and think about, my gosh, were there times in my life where that was the case for me, that I was to be seen and not heard? And what did that do to my voice? Also think about, you know, were there times that if you were um, outspoken in any way, shape, or form, would you have gotten in trouble, gotten in trouble from a teacher, gotten in trouble from a principal, gotten in trouble from your parents? Again, like, as a little child, your intention probably is not to be um, super disrespectful. However, did you get in trouble for using your voice in some way that wasn't um, in this little narrow pathway, right? And, and when I think about like um, um, my schooling in some way, like, so I went to a private school and I remember like, it's so still vivid. It, even though I have worked through some of this stuff, it's still like such a vivid memory for me. So um, we didn't have air conditioning where um, my school was and it was blasted hot, right? So you're outside, you're, I don't know, this must have been like second or third grade. Um, you're outside, it's super hot. Um, you come in, there's no air conditioning. And um, I had made a paper fan and I was like fanning myself because like you're hot, you're sweaty, you're just playing outside on the blacktop, like everything heat related, right? And I, I don't remember if the teacher asked me to put it away and I didn't, but then she said, okay, you have to make, you know, 25 for the class. 
and I'm going to call your parents. And that just like, like, I, I can just feel myself just like, oh my gosh, like they're going to call my parents crying. And when you think about the, the situation, like how ridiculous, right? I mean, it was a little fan. I was trying to cool myself off, but yet that fear that was planted in me of my, my parents now being involved. And again, I don't remember the conversation exchange, but like, I never said anything to my parents about this. And it was just that, like, you could just, like, I can almost feel it right now, just lodged in my throat. Like, I can't talk. I can't get the words out. Like, and I remember crying when I talked to her after school. I remember crying about it. This is Osterhaus, I think her name was. Osterhaus, Osterhaus, something like that. But some of that energy from childhood is still lodged inside you. And that is keeping that adhesive over your mouth so that your voice is lost. So think about that. Are there times in your life where you got in trouble? Are there times in your life, going even adulthood to childhood, where you had this fear or someone told you, you know, you can't say that because it's going to hurt someone else's feelings? Well, again, it's not being about being disrespectful, but if what you say triggers somebody else in some way, shape, or form, that's really some of their inner work that they need to move through and clear. Essentially, you are supporting them in their inner work. Will they see it now that it's come to the surface and know that they have to work through it? Nope. Not always, not always. But again, if you are in alignment with what you want to say and who you are, those hurt feelings, again, like you can be compassionate about this at the same time. Like we can have both and in situations where we're in any situation in life, right? But especially when we're trying to reveal our voice and reconnect with our voice. We can have both and. We can be compassionate and we can know that mm, that person probably has some work to do, some inner work to do. So think about that. Were there times in your childhood, in your teenage years, in your adulthood that it essentially have been contributing, have been compounding to you quieting your voice to the point where it almost feels lost. Now, here's, you know, here's what happens. And I kind of alluded to this a little bit is that when we don't clear out those energies and when the same situations are repeated over and over and over again, we almost take this on as normal. We almost take this on as common practice. But what if it's not? What if your lost voice is not the common practice? What if that is, is at such a low energy that it really does not even align or resonate with your true self? Right? Like what holds us back? from really accessing our true self. Now, again, as I mentioned, you know, at this at the beginning of this, it's when that pivot shows up for you to do something new in your life, to make a change, to reinvent yourself in some way, it's showing up because you're ready. Intellectually, are you going to feel ready? Oh hell no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But energetically, it's showing up because yes, it is time, you're ready. And so what if you allowed your voice to be heard to support you in this pivot, to have those conversations with people that potentially could support you, and even the conversations with people that don't support you, but yet you feel so firm, so grounded, in this change that you want to make, imagine what that would do to your voice. 
So again, think about those things that I shared with you today. The alignment and reconnection of your true self. Are you, is it more head-centered for, for you or is it heart-centered? Head-centered is not going to serve you long-term. It will in the short term, but heart-centered will, show, will um, support you long-term. Make sure you're prioritizing yourself. You know, sink into those feminine energies. And I know I'm going to do an upcoming episode all about some feminine and masculine energies and um, the wounded energies, just so that you can have a better understanding of that. And when you're prior prioritizing yourself, you want, you're going to want to heal those wounded energies because the wounded energies of the feminine and the masculine, they don't serve us at all. They don't support us in excelling and creating expansiveness. Think about why you trust others more than yourself. Where does that, where did that trust start to crumble in a sense? What holds you back from tapping into your, your inner knowing, your intuition, that trusting of yourself? And then lastly, it's, you know, go back in time. Go back to those roots. Where was that voice stifled and then over time became lost? Because again, we could have something, a big situation in childhood, and then perhaps a big situation in teenage years, and then a situation in adulthood. It could just be three situations, but those energies mixed together can certainly create a big block when using your voice. What were your parents, how did your parents treat you, right? Were you a child where it was, you are to be seen and not heard? Think about, you know, times that you were punished or you got in trouble. Think about times that even you, maybe you got in trouble for hurting someone else's feelings or saying something that, again, you may not have interpreted it, it as being mean, but they did. For whatever reason, it came back on you. And, you know, find, finding your lost voice and reconnecting with yourself. Like this, this is some deep inner work. But it is really a, an opening, a pathway. It's important when it comes to reinventing yourself. So if that pivot is showing up, make sure that you're doing some work around your voice. And I'm certainly happy to support you in any way I can. So if that is something you're looking for some for support in, make sure you send me a, a DM regarding this. Because ultimately, the journey is yours, but it's never meant to walk alone. And you can walk alone in it, but you just have to decide, do I want a shorter path to it by getting support? Or do I want to take the longer path and figure it out of myself? Each way is perfectly fine. It's just whatever resonates most with you. So as we wrap up today, rip that tape off. Rip that tape off and find your voice and sink into that voice and ground yourself in the strength of your voice. And don't forget, there are three shortcuts to reinventing thyself that will support you with finding your voice. And you can find that at www.reinventingthyself.com. So let me know, what, what are you taking away from this episode? Drop it in the comments, shoot me a DM, shoot me an email. Let me know what resonates with you the most. Because if you were attracted to this episode in some way, shape or form, it was for a reason. There is nothing coincidental. Everything happens for a reason. And secondly, I want you to think about who do you know that deserves to hear this message? I'd be cert I certainly would be grateful if you would share that, share this episode with this person. And guess what? I, fathom, I would fathom that they would be grateful to hear it as well if they popped into your mind when I asked you that question. Who deserves to hear this episode? So again, it is time for you to rip off that tape, find your voice, ground yourself in the strength of your voice, because guess what? It is there waiting for you. Ultimately, your voice never left you. 
you abandoned your voice. You lost your voice. But it's there waiting for you. Find the strength in your voice, the courage, the, the firm planting of your feet in your voice. And look at the different things I shared with you today as to how potentially that is impacting your voice. So go forward today, embracing the newness of allowing your voice to be heard and let your amazingness shine. Take care and we'll see you next time. Well, what are you waiting for? Whether you've pivoted and are unsure or you're on the verge of pivoting, there is no better time than now for you to begin. Want to know why? Because if it wasn't the right time, the pivot wouldn't have shown up. And to get you started, I've got three shortcuts to reinventing thyself. Just head on over to www.reinventingthyself.com and you can download it there. And don't forget to message me with the shortcut that resonates with you the most. One last thing, I know you and I are not the only ones that have leaned into the pivot. Be sure to share this with others so they can be supported too. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you for supporting me and sharing this message. Until next time.